Today, BlackRock refiles its spot Bitcoin ETF application with more clarity on how it could stomp out market manipulation. Binance US's market share collapses in the wake of the SEC's lawsuits. And the VP of Investigations for Chainalysis explains how the firm was able to help Israel identify crypto the country believes financed Hezbollah and the Iranian military. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Mackenzie Segalos. Digital currency markets are sliding this morning, with Bitcoin falling 2% in the past 24 hours. Ether also took a 2.6% hit, but still traded just above the $1,900 level. And Polygon slid nearly 4.3%. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. BlackRock has refiled its application for a spot Bitcoin ETF to include more clarity, specifically how the company would prevent market manipulation. Monday's updated filing through NASDAQ reveals that BlackRock partnered with Coinbase to provide market surveillance, and that filing claims the surveillance sharing agreement could deter fraud and manipulation. This comes after the SEC found that the original filings by NASDAQ to be incomplete. Now, BlackRock's proposed ETF faces growing competition as investment firms propose their own applications, including WisdomTree and Fidelity. Next, Binance US's market share has plummeted in the wake of the SEC's lawsuits. Research from Keiko found the exchange's market share hit an all-time low, falling from more than 20% in April to below 1%. Now, at the same time, Keiko found that Coinbase's market share has risen to its highest level since January, despite its own troubles with the SEC. Shares of Coinbase were actually dropping this morning after Piper Sandler downgraded the stock. The firm said the rise in crypto prices hasn't helped trading volumes on the platform. Piper Sandler actually expects the company to report its lowest trading volumes and monthly transacting users in two years in Q3. Meanwhile, overseas, Binance reportedly faced a search of its offices in Australia. Bloomberg reports that Australia's Securities and Investments Commission conducted searches at multiple offices across the country on Tuesday. That search was reportedly part of an investigation into the exchange's derivatives business, which shut down back in April. We reached out to the commission and a spokesperson told us the agency's review of Binance Australia is ongoing, but it can't confirm or deny any operational detail such as possible searches. A Binance spokesperson told us the firm is cooperating with local authorities and, quote, focused on meeting local regulatory standards in order to serve our users in Australia in a fully compliant manner. All right, so last week we told you that Chainalysis said their tools helped Israel seize crypto that it believes was used to finance a powerful arm of the Iranian military and the Iran-backed Hezbollah militant group. For our main story, Crypto World's Talia Kaplan spoke with the blockchain data platform's VP of Investigations, Aaron Plant. She breaks down how Chainalysis tools played a role. Last week, Israel's defense minister said the country's National Bureau for Counterterror Financing confiscated millions of dollars in crypto from Hezbollah and from Iran's Quds Force for the first time ever. In a blog post, Chainalysis said that their tools played a role in this, quote, landmark national security achievement. In the post, Chainalysis said that Israel seized a total of about $1.7 million worth of crypto and disrupted cryptocurrency-based terrorism financing infrastructure run by the two organizations. How are your tools able to play a role in detecting this kind of activity? That's correct. It was a really exciting event to see because it tackled a form of terrorism that we consider to be state-sponsored, looking at Iran's Quds Force as well as Hezbollah in Lebanon. And this is a type of terrorism that's backed by nations that have been unfriendly to other nations in the world. And this is a, a very successful event to, to tackle that type of terrorism. And um, the chain analysis tools, which are used in this type of seizure, helps the public sector agencies, which are monitoring the money, to trace the funds associated with that terrorism network to services where those funds can be frozen. And in working with the tools, they're able to generate the evidence that they need from the tools like Chainalysis's reactor tool to provide the services with a freeze order and a seize order that removes those funds from that network. 
and chain analysis tools played a really important role in this. And we worked um, really closely with the agencies and very excited to see the success. So how did the situation work exactly? Is chain analysis a contractor for the Israeli authorities, perhaps? And why was it important for chain analysis to help the Israeli government with this effort? The data that's provided to the Israeli government so that they're able to map out the entire network of terrorist funds is really important. And that's something that Chainalysis is providing to the Israeli government as well as other governments around the world. And the accuracy and um, amount of attribution in that data is what's really crucial for them to be able to identify not just a single wallet, but many wallets associated with that terrorist network. And being able to show them the flow of funds in our data and in our tools so that they can trace those funds and seize them back is a long process. It's sometimes months, sometimes years. And it's really exciting to see when it culminates in this type of event. And the chain analysis tools are widely used across government agencies and within Israel as well. So in the blog post, expanding on what you just said, Chainalysis notes that the details revealed in the announcement also disclose crucial operational details of how Hezbollah and other groups utilize crypto. Can you take us through some of what was discovered exactly? Yeah, absolutely. So we, in our research, we show that terrorist groups and groups that are um, are raising money for their activities will often raise money through crypto. So we saw some of this when Russia invaded Ukraine illegally, where pro-Russia groups were raising funds on Telegram and some, some chat platforms, and they would put out donation addresses and donations would be made in crypto. You see this also with um, the terrorist organizations around the Middle East. And recently, a terrorist organization associated with Hamas said that they would stop accepting crypto donations because there has been so much law enforcement action against them, which is really exciting to see. You also have um, what I believe to be a greater threat, which are the state-sponsored terrorist groups, where nation states are leveraging these networks and cryptocurrency to buy infrastructure, which supports things like cyber attacks. And they're also evading sanctions so that they can engage in markets where they'd otherwise be uh, sanctioned out of. And they're also raising money to support a regime which is in place, which is a sanctioned regime. And that's what you're seeing in this, this circumstance where it impacts Uh, the state-sponsored terrorist groups that exist in Iran as well as in Lebanon. So I understand that Chainalysis has more than 1,000 customers in more than 70 countries. That includes government agencies, financial institutions, and crypto businesses. So I'm wondering if you're working with any other specific governments right now to help detect illicit activity. We work with hundreds of government agencies around the world. We are based in over over 20 countries, uh, and we have in- investigators, engineers, intelligence analysts in all of these countries as well, who are working with both the public and the private sector to engage their, their and build their capacity to be able to tackle these threats themselves, as well as provide them with the tools and the data that they need to go after this type of threat. We're also working with them on their investigations and helping to provide leads and other types of activity that helps to stop the threat as well. I think what's unique about the space is the engagement of both the public and the private sector. As it relates to crypto, the most of the transactions that you're able to view on blockchains are publicly available to be viewed. uh, And the ability of private sector agencies to identify this type of activity, build out these networks, and provide some of that intelligence into the public sector is a really valuable tool that exists in the crypto space. But ultimately, we want the public sector agencies themselves to have the right tools like Chainalysis provides, as well as the training and the capacity so that they are able to do it themselves. And the countries that Chainalysis has been in for a number of years and has built relationships with over a number of years we're seeing being very successful in this fight 
And yeah, I've been with Chainalysis for three years now, and it's great to see the the work that we've built with these countries over over years now starting to successfully seize terrorist um, state sponsored terrorist money, successfully seizing North Korean funds. You know the the funds that we've been um, working with to try to stop for for many years now. Plant provided specific examples of other countries Chainalysis is working with to detect illicit activity. You can check out the full interview on cnbc.com slash crypto world. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we will be back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.